So Rode just came out with something so dope, the Rodecaster video, something that me as a podcaster, a podcast producer has been asking for for a very long time. The ability to connect high quality audio into video seamlessly. And this thing does it. So here are some features that the Rodecaster video has that I love. So number one, obviously, is the ISO recording. I love the fact that it has ISO recording so I can trust it to record every camera angle and I don't have to worry about anything. It, I love it for that. One other feature that I love is its size. When it comes to audio or video gear, size matters. You want to be able to have an equipment that can do the job and be small enough to travel with. So this is the A10 Mini Extreme ISO and this is the A10 Mini. So these are two devices that essentially do the same thing. This has eight HDMI sources and it has two HDMI out, whereas this has only four HDMI, which is very limited. Uh, whereas this one has a whole lot of functionality and flexibility to it, but it does have its limits. So the beautiful thing about the Rodecaster video is that it eliminates this limitation by adding two XLR inputs on the back of the Rodecaster video, which is phenomenal. So these aren't just like your traditional, hey, we're just going to throw this in there. This is an afterthought. It's really a video switcher, but we're going to add audio in there. No, you're getting some high quality XLR input on the back of this thing. And I'm super duper excited about that. One last thing that I love about the Rodecaster video is that it has auto switching. So as a podcast producer, I usually spend my time switching camera angles, but with the AI switching, it has the ability to assign microphones to cameras. So let's say I'm doing a podcast. Mic one is assigned to camera one. Anytime the switcher picks up audio from mic one, it knows to switch the camera to camera one. Now let's introduce mic two. So mic two is the guest. So I'm the guest and I have mic two. This is mic two. Anytime the switcher detects audio from mic two, it'll switch to this camera angle. And let's just say we have a, th a third camera angle and it's a close up of our guest. So anytime that mic two is having audio spoken to it, it'll swap between the two camera angles for the mic two. So camera two and then camera three which will be assigned to mic two, that makes sense. So me as a, I just want one camera angle. I just want one close-up shot. And then mic two will probably have a close-up shot of the guest and then a wide shot of me, the host. So that way I'm not really left out. So it will swap between a close-up of mic two and then it'll, sh it'll transition to a wide shot of mic two. And then when I start speaking to mic one, it'll swap to a close up of just me talking. I think this is a game changer. As a podcast producer, this switching camera angles has just been the main thing. You just switch camera angles, make sure that's in focus and all that. I mean, you still would have to do that, but this takes a lot of energy out of like you as a producer. So I'm really, really excited for that. And I'm also excited for the future firmware updates and just the possibilities of how this can get better. So let's talk about the price. So it's going for $11.99 and yeah, I know it's pretty expensive for most people, but for what it is, let's talk about it. It has AI video switching. It has amazing preamps. It has XLR inputs. It has it's a video switcher with four HDMI, even though they're 1080p, not 4K, still good Two HDMI out. And you have a touch screen and I'm not trying to like sell it. I'm just giving you a perspective because at $11.99 in 2024, that's the price. And it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all these cool features, and you can use it with Rode's wireless microphones and you can connect a webcam and USB mics to it. Let's. I'm just going to state that this is $1,300. This does not have Wi-Fi. <laughs> this does not have Bluetooth. This has eight HDMI sources. They're 1080p with two USB-C out and two HDMI out. Um, this thing is great. I love this thing. This is one of my favorite tools, but it has a whole lot of real estate here that I don't necessarily use. 
I just saw a Tom Buck video and he talked about how he never touches these buttons. And he's not alone. I r- never touch any of these buttons um, other than just switching and maybe the record button up top of here when I'm recording onto an SSD. All I'm saying is this device quite literally just knocks this out of the water, knock this out of the park, whatever your terminology is if, and as far as features and as far as functionality and usability. I produce podcasts for clients on a daily basis sometimes, and I quite literally have to lug a Rodecaster Pro 2, an A10 Mini Extreme ISO, uh, SSD, flash drives, whatever the case is, just to make it work. I have to carry multiple devices just to record a video podcast, video interview. Now you're telling me that I'll be able to do essentially all those things with just one device. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the Roadcaster video. I think it's a great tool. Definitely is going to eliminate friction for a lot of people who have this setup and they're trying to solve a problem. This is the device that I think that will be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see where they go from here. As far as me, I'm getting it. I, I, I think I made up my mind as soon as I saw the announcement um, a couple of days would go. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. Whatever it is, I want it. <laughs> but all right, I thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment down below. Let me know if you, are you getting the Roadcaster video? Are you interested in it? Do you think it's overkill? Uh, what are your reasons for getting it? What are your reasons for not being interested in it? Please leave them in the comments down below. Have a nice one. Peace.